Hello, my name is Ilian St. Hilaire, and we're going to take a quick introduction to Mesh Commander. I'll be using version 0.1.8, and if you download the executable and run it, you will be introduced into this screen. Now, I'll just presume here that you know a little bit about Intel Active Management Technology, Intel AMT, and so you just want to get started, and you have AMT machines that are already uh, set up. So what I'm going to do is going to say, I'm going to click on Add here, and I'm going to, uh, for example, if your own machine is AMT enabled, uh, you can put like local uh, host and, uh, uh, you know, to add a machine. Now, th this tool allows you to put a friendly name that's different than the, um, than the host name. So, if, for example, here I can say my own computer as the name, and then I will put the password of my own AMT machine. Say OK. And so there you go, my own computer is, is uh, set up and I can hit connect and connect to the computer. Now I'm connecting through LMS on the local interface uh, when I'm using this mode and that's it. So uh, just before we get into the script, I'll dis uh, this part, I'll disconnect and I'll add another computer. So add computer here, you can also go in file and say add AMT computer right there. And for example here I'm going to do um, lab right is my computer. I'm going to put the IP address and the password and say OK. And now, now I added a second computer and here we go. So I can connect to one computer at a time using this tool and uh, the tool is entirely web-based. It does Wizman back to AMT and so in a few seconds here you see um, the, the basic system status of, a of AMT so it's currently powered on and plugged in you can uh, you have the name and so on for the blue, blue links or the links with the little uh, diamond next to them that means that you can click on them so for example active features if I want to change that or if I want to change the name of my uh, AMT machine or if I want to change the power state of my machine to another power state you can do that right here um, you can also say set the AMT policy and so on uh, now uh, let's just go through all the left side things here very quickly so the first one is the system status the second one is remote desktop this allows you to connect to the desktop remotely using hardware KVM and so uh, and by the way this page kind of um, it uh, stretches um, so that the KVM always fits inside whatever page you have and so that's kind of practical but what happens is that the native resolution on the remote side may be higher than the one on local side but now I can go ahead and take control of my machine I can do things this is entirely hardware KVM enabled so I can go into power action I could reboot the machine if I want to right here and go to BIOS and that would work um, these two icons allow me to rotate the screen this is useful especially for um, cases where the remote screen is is sideways we can do either I'll get into that into other videos there's settings here and uh, you can also go to full screen or normal mode so that's it for KVM oh and I have the control and delete on the bottom here and so you can do that so I'm going to disconnect that serial over LAN this is the um, the uh, VT100 uh, terminal and the serial over LAN feature has a serial port a virtual serial port inside uh, exposed to DOS that's actually routed through AMT and so if you have things going on here you'll see that hardware information shows the hardware uh, memory BIOS board and everything of the remote computer you can click Save here and save that information as a JSON file if you want to event log uh, same as the event log that you would have on a normal AMT machine uh, a couple of uh, the things we've added first of all you can hit save and save the event log to a um, JSON file you can click on individual events and get uh, you know exact data on that uh, event you can also filter so for example if I type ROM then you have only the events with ROM in them that show up so kind of nice for um, quickly finding the events you want and so you can see all the events right there audit log this allows you to see um, everything that users have done on uh, the AMT machine and you can see the account and the um, the IP address that was used to to do this operation so it just goes on and on here and the nice thing is you can also filter you can also save to file 
and in later versions we'll probably have more control over the uh, AMT audit log. Network settings, this allows you to turn on and off, for example, IPv6. Um, if you have Wi-Fi, at the bottom here, you'll have all the Wi-Fi profiles and you can set up Wi-Fi. Uh, you can set up, uh, you know, uh, DHCP updates, DNS updates. You can set up the FQDN and whether it shares it with the OS and so on and so forth. For example, here, I'm, I'm going to just turn on IPv6 for giggles. And so there you go, IPv6 is on and then you can hit refresh and um, there's AMT just assigned uh, the local scope IP address, IPv6 address right here. Internet settings, this allows you to set up CIRA and also environment detection. So here environment detection is disabled, but you can type in um, uh, domain.com, for example, and add. So you can add up to four domains that uh, are considered intranet and everything else will be extranet. You can set up uh, how CIRA it will be initiated and um, for um, and then you can set up if user initiates or an alert or if permission um, you know how uh, what server is going to be uh, you know connected you can add more servers right here so FQDN or IPv4 and the cer certificate and so on so this is all for CIRA setup uh, moving along Security settings, this allows you to set up uh, security for Intel AMT. So you have the certificate store right here. Um, I can, for example, add a new certificate and select it and say if, if this is a root or if this is a chain cert. Uh, you can also issue new certificates. So uh, you can select your root cert and then uh, issue a, uh, Intel's uh, AMT certificate. The root certificate will sign the AMT certificate right here. So that's very practical if you want to quickly turn on AMT into TLS mode or uh, take a look at the certificates that are already on the platform. You can also delete the certs if you want. So that's good. Agent presence, this allows you to monitor software on uh, the uh, OS. Of course, the software needs to be able to do this correctly, but now I can put, uh, for, so I can add a watchdog like test software, for example, an antivirus or something. And you can select, put the GUID here, or if you click on uh, the device ID, it will just generate a GUID for you, which is kind of nice. And it's set up in the uh, startup and the timeout of the watchdog. Then once you're done, you say, okay, watchdog is set up. And then you can set, add actions. For example, when it goes from any state to expired, write that state to log, and then the action will be added here. Um, I won't go into much detail here of how this uh, works, but that's the basics. System defense, uh, you can say, for example, add a policy, uh, drop all, and the default is to drop all packets, actually drop and count all packets and say okay. There you go, or count all. This allows you to count all the packets and then you can say on the wired interface, I want count all to be enabled. And you'll see that if you have counters on system defense, the counters will show up here. So uh, if I hit refresh here a couple of times, at some point packets, the packet counts will, will start going up. Uh, user accounts, you can create, delete user accounts. So for example, Joe, I'll type in the password, password again, and I can say I want Joe to have a few sets of permissions and I want those to be local or remote. And once I'm done, I can click OK and Joe's just been added. I can click uh, Joe to see what uh, the account is. I can disable the account or re-enable the account and I can edit the account. Uh, but note that if you edit the account, uh, you can delete the account here. If you edit the account, you need to re-enter uh, the password also. And so that's it. We also have uh, a script editor. Uh, more on that in a different video. And we also have a Wizman browser. This allows you to quickly query Wizman objects in AMT. This is useful for debugging um, AMT and for development, so especially for my use. Another key, features we, key feature I like is that we have a save state button in the system status. This allows you to save the entire state of AMT. It will take about a minute or two, but it basically dumps all of the state of AMT into this file and allows you to uh, send this file maybe to some support people who will take a look at the state of AMT and see what's going on. So that's it. That's a quick view of Mesh Commander, 
I hope it helps and uh, of course I'll be doing other videos to go into detail on many of the other features of Mesh Commander. Thank you so much.